of God, not of work, lest anyone should boast. Amen? So we want to just look at, we are saved by grace, true faith. Amen? So we know that the grace where Jesus, which is the message of the cross, Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. That's the grace of God. Not anything that we have done to earn it, but God in his sovereign mercies. Amen. And we access this through faith. Jesus died over 2,000 years ago. And the day you get saved is the day you choose to lay hold of that grace by faith. Amen. So it's not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. So you are not saved because you earned it. It is because God in his sovereign mercies chose to save you and your salvation is received by faith. Believe what God says. Amen. So the scriptures say that Jesus Christ died for our sin. We believe it and we are saved. Amen. It also says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old are passed away, are become new. Amen. So when you become born again, you're a brand new creature. You're brand new, a newborn baby in the spirit. Amen. Your old is not held against you. Your past is not held against you. You are brand new. Amen. You'd have what we call a clean slate. Amen. You have become a brand new. Right, we shared on that. Yeah, you have become a brand new, never before existed creature. Your past is not held against you. We will continue by looking at what are my responsibilities as a Christian. So the first responsibility of a Christian, I want Auntie Joy to go ahead and read for us. The first responsibility of us as Christians is to live holy and above sin. This is brought out by the following scripture. First John 2 verse 2. My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. Romans 6 verse 12 says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Amen. The second responsibility of us as Christians is to seek to obey God always. Go ahead and share that for me, Auntie Joy. Deuteronomy 10 verse 12 says, and now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Amen. So we have the first responsibility to live holy and to live above sin. Second responsibility is to love the Lord thy God. Amen. And to fear him and walk in all his ways. Amen. Go ahead with the third responsibility, Auntie Joy. The third responsibility of us as Christians is to maintain right relationship. In Matthew 5, 23 to 24, it says, Therefore, O Arthur, and there remember that thy brother at heart against thee, leave your life before the altar, and go thy way, firm, be reconciled to thy brother. And then come and offer that. Thank you. Amen. So even in the, the scripture where if thy brother of heart against thee, not you have heart against the brother, but the brother of heart against you, you be the bigger person. You leaving your gift. Listen, I want to make it right in my brother. I choose to make it right. Amen by showing to be the more mature person. It also says in Mark eleven twenty five, 25, and when he stand praying, forgive, 
if ye have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So what this basically is saying, listen, forgiveness is conditional. If you forgive others, you receive forgiveness from your Father. If you you will not get forgiveness. And forgiveness is so important. Amen? So we cannot afford not to get forgiveness from our Father. So therefore, our first priority is to make sure that we forgive our brother, that we can get forgiveness from our Father. Amen? Any questions thus far? Okay, let's continue. Whether your brother has something against you or you have something against anybody, God's put the responsibility on you to seek reconciliation. Amen? So therefore, God is not excusing you. Although it might be somebody else that up against you, God is not excusing you. God is putting responsibility on you to seek to make reconciliation. Amen? Our fourth responsibility. Go ahead and read for me, Auntie Joy. Fourth responsibility of us as Christians is to share the gospel with others. Mark 15, verse 15 says, And he said unto them, Go in, in all the world and preach the gospel to every people. It means? It means that we have a responsibility to preach or herald the good news to the creation. It doesn't only mean on the street corner, but anywhere in time, possible and practical. Example, in Brighton's story or happy, use the opportunity to expose them to Jesus in the world or in the Amen. So we have a responsibility to preach or herald the good news. Amen. What I'll normally tell people, just go and tell what the Lord has done for you. Amen. Tell how good God is to you. Amen. And by doing so, they'll want to come to know the God who has done this for you. Amen. And you begin to point them to Jesus. Begin to share what you heard to be saved. Amen. The same message that was shared to you for you to be saved. Start by sharing that. And as soon as you learn more scriptures, then you begin to use those scriptures to share the gospel. Amen. Our fifth responsibility. The fifth responsibility of us as Christians is to attend and participate fully in a local church. Let us look at the following scripture. First Corinthians 14, verse 26 says, How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you had a psalm, a doctrine, had a revelation, had an interpretation? Let all things be done unto any time. It also says in Hebrews 10, verse 17 and 25, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Amen. So when we attend church, we must participate fully. Amen. And, and, and I love this. When you come together, one must have a, a psalm, a doctrine, a revelation. And what comes out of us spending time in the presence of the Lord, prepared in the presence of the Lord, and receiving from the Lord, and coming to give when we come together. Amen? So it's not that we come to church just to receive. Amen? But come to give. Come prepared to give. Amen? So get involved in your local church activity. Get involved. Our sixth responsibility, Auntie Joy. The sixth responsibility of us as Christians is to build the kingdom of God with our resources. This includes our spiritual gifts, natural abilities, financial resources, etc. Do not attend church passively. Amen. So don't say that you're too young. Don't say that you don't have anything to give. Just like, like, like the, the, the young man with the five fish and the three loaves. Amen? He brought it to Jesus. This is what he has. 
Amen. So when you come, bring what you have. Whatever it is that you have, bring it. If you only can um, clean the church, Bishop, this is what I can do. This is what I believe I can help with. Amen? Amen. So we, what are some of the benefits now of serving God? Sorry, let me read that. What are some of the benefits of serving God as a Christian? Amen? So this is the nice part. Some of the benefits. Let's look at, um, before we do that, in Psalms 103, verse 2, it tells us, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. We are encouraged not to forget the, those benefits. Amen. So we want to look at the first benefits, Auntie Joy. The first set of benefits that we will look at are health and healing. Know this for sure, that God not only wants us to heal when we are sick, but he wants us to remain healthy as well. In Exodus 15, verse 26, it says, And thou wilt give them heart into the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and take all his statutes, and will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egypt son. For I am the Lord thy God. That he will be. Amen. So we see there just one of the benefits from serving God that He promised to keep you in good well, health. Can you? Well, a second, Minister Swine. Um, yeah. Um, Pastor Elaine just said she's not able to hear. Is there anybody else who have a difficult ear? I'm not. The is reading. Huh? Okay, let me bring the mic a bit closer. So you miss out a lot? No, fortunately, fortunately I'm able to watch the screen and, and see. Oh, follow. Okay. But um, but can you ensure that if uh, are you hearing now? Go ahead, Sean. All right. I'll continue. Let's if, if anybody have any problem, just please make, make a note so, so that I can know. Go ahead, Minister Top. Um, smiling. Right. Um, so we just do that. What are some of the benefits of serving God? We'll do that again. And um let's see if I, I can do something for one minute. So we, we'll see if we can get, um, you hearing me loud and clear, Pastor D? I can hear you clearly, but some person that wasn't able to hear. Um, right. Can you start from where, where the benefits begin? Right. So the first set of benefit is health and healing. And go ahead and read for me, Auntie Joy. Know this for sure. That God had not only wants us healed when we are sick, but he wants us to remain healthy as well. Exodus 15 verse 26 says, And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do what is right in his sight, and will give here to his commandment, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he let thee. Amen. And as, as we just read it again, one of the revelations that came out to me is that if, if we don't break the hedge, if we walk in obedience, the Lord will not put any of the diseases upon us. He will not allow the enemy to put any sickness or disease upon us. Amen. If we obey, walk in obedience. Amen. And I just want to highlight that point. Amen. It also says in 1 Peter 2, 24, who is, who is our own self for our sin in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes 
we were healed. Amen. So I really love that. By his Read that for me, Auntie Joy. Who in his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we e were healed. Amen. Amen. So the Lord already healed us. Amen. He already bore our sins. So we just need to live it unto righteousness. Amen. Second set of benefits. The second set of benefits that we will look at are walking in holiness, blamelessness, sanctification, and purity. It says in Psalms 119, 9 to 11, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking it thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O Lord. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. Before you go any further. So this second benefit that we're looking at is walking in holiness, blamelessness, and sanctification. So we see there at the end of Psalms 19, David saying, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against thee. Amen. So I believe that that one way how to live in purity and in holiness and blamelessness, hiding the word of God in our heart. Amen. Continue to joy. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 6 verse 18 to 20 says, support this benefit as it reads, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is do is without the body, but he that committed fornication see body. What? Know he not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and he are not your own. For he are brought with a price, bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Amen. One revelation that just came out to me as, as we were sharing as well is that we're born again because we invite the person of Jesus Christ to come into our heart. And the person of Jesus can come because we have been washed by the blood and we are now clean. And because Jesus Christ lives inside our heart, when we commit fornication, mess up the temple where God lives, then God cannot stay in unclean vessel amen so it's important to walk in purity that the spirit of god will remain amen with us bless the lord the bible encourage us to make every effort to walk above sin so we're looking at the third responsibility go ahead and join the third, third set of benefits that we look at at our having financial prosperity and success. Wow, this is the good one. I mean, let me read that. Psalms 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which are pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So the Lord have pleasure in blessing us, in supplying all our needs. It, in, it, the Lord has pleasure for us walking in success and prosperity. Amen. Go ahead, Auntie Joy. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, 9. Let them shout for joy. Nine. Honor thy Lord. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Amen. I personally can testify that this works. When I was going through a season where I needed increase, the Lord led me to the scripture as a young believer. Honor the Lord 
with thy substance, one translation to honor the Lord with thy wealth, and with the first fruit of your increase. So when I start sowing my first fruit, the first, the first, then the Lord begin. And one of the principles of first fruit, the first fruit sanctify everything as, as holy. So if the first part of the dough is holy, the entire dough is holy. Amen. Second Corinthians 8, verse 9. For mm -hmm. ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that he through his poverty might be rich. Amen. And this is one of the the, the um the blessings are of the cross. Jesus became poor on the cross that we might become rich. Jesus suffered nakedness, lacking all things that we should lack. So we should have all things. Amen. So this is one of the curse that Jesus took for us on the cross or poverty that we might become rich. Amen. Fourth set of responsibility, fourth, fourth set of benefits that we look at are wisdom, revelation, and guidance. 23, two to three. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalms 25, verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. Psalms 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are hardened by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen. And we say every scripture here, the Lord is leading us in his path. Amen. So the Lord wants to lead us and the Lord wants to guide us and he's confirming it in scripture that he's the one leading and guiding. Amen. And, and I love what Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Amen. And we know that a double-minded person will not receive anything from God. Amen. So what the Lord needs is wholeheartedness. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Amen. Do not work things out in your head and say, this is best for me. Seek the Lord and then he will direct our part. Amen. So in all our ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge the Lord. Amen. Our fifth set of benefits that we look at are walking in authority, dominion, and victory. Leviticus 26, 7 to 8. And he shall cause your enemies, and they shall fall. He shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase a thousand, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to fight, flight. And your enemies shall fall before you. Matthew 16, verse 19 says, And I will give unto thee the kings of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Luke 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. And we sit there with how the Old Testament delivered to us where the warfare was physical and the Lord, uh, we shall chase our enemy physically, and we, they shall fall before us by the sword. We see in the New Testament, now it's spiritual. We have received the keys to the kingdom. Amen. We have received authority. We have received dominion. Amen. 
and, and Luke 19 confirms it, say, Behold, I give unto you power. Amen. And we know that power is the power of the Holy Spirit to tread upon serpent and scorpion and all the power of the enemy. Amen. So Old Testament, we use sword. In the New Testament, we use authority and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So um, our six set of benefits that we'll look at are living in fearlessness and boldness. Go ahead on to Joy, Psalms 23, verse 4. Psalm 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. It reads, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. And in all through scripture, it is dealing with the spirit of fear. Amen. We, we will not fear no evil. Why? For God is with us. Amen. And he has not given us a spirit. The spirit that he caused to live in us is not a spirit that is fearful. Amen. But it's a spirit of love, power, and of a stone mind. So if we feel fear and humility, amen, bless the Lord. The seventh set of benefits that we look at is us having forgiveness of sins. Proverbs 28, verse 13, we read, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. From Psalms 103 verse 12 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And Isaiah 43 verse 25 reads, I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Amen. So when the enemy wants to come and remind you of stuff that you used to do before you get saved, or even mistake that you have made and repented of, amen, we stand on this scripture because this is what the word of the Lord says. Amen. This is what the word of, as far as the east is from the west, he had removed our transgression from us. Amen. So we stand on those words and we believe it. Amen. And don't believe the lies of the enemy. Amen. So we have come to our end of what have I gotten myself into? So we have the question and answer. Uncle David, sorry, Reverend David. No, sorry, to answer the board. Um, the, the, the questions, I want, I want you, everyone to, to look at the questions in their own private time. And to attempt to do them in revision questions. Um, Minister Glenn has taught you, and Minister Janet has taught you nothing that you need to learn as well as to teach others. There are things that, that assume that other Christians know they don't know. You have to need to find out what the scripture says and teach it. So I want you to go back over the, the lesson um, on your own, as well as to look at the the questions and answers. There are some questions with, with answers at, at, at the end, end of, at the end of the book for, for, for your benefit. Amen? Amen. So you need to look at them and go back over there. Amen. Any any questions, any comments? Anybody have things they want to ask? Any questions they want to ask? Thank you, Minister Glenn and Minister Joanne. You're welcome, Pastor. You're welcome, Reverend Dave. Um, Pastor, I'm just asking a question in relation to the second requirement, no, second set of benefits. Right. All right. So the second set of benefits 
sound more to me like they are requirements. Where it says walking in holiness, blamelessness, sanctification, and purity. I just want a little clarity on that. Is it that these are, I know they're requirements um, and they're identified as benefits. I, 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 why do I say that? Because sometimes people, some people believe that they can't live about sin. But the victory is already there, positive above sin. There's a benefit that we can live above sin. Okay, so it is the ability then. Okay, yes. yes it's yes. ability to. Amen. Yes. They were blameless. Let, 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 let give an example. There's a saying I've heard people say that we sin in tower than deed. And that we, we, we sin, sin when we know that. Actually, that's not true. Because when you're not a Christian, you sin without even thinking about it. When you become a Christian, if you sin, it affects your conscience. In fact, think about it. Um, can you think of when last you did something that deliberately wrong? Of course you can. I mean, as believers, we normally try to live above sin. But as a non-believer, we, we, we say we're not even, even thinking about it. So that's one of the benefits of being a Christian. We can live above sin. We live in holiness, live in sanctification and purity. In fact, when I wasn't a Christian, I, 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 I thought about girls that weren't holy. When I became a Christian, I, I decided not to think them. When the thoughts came, I, I actually resisted the thoughts. So why am I saying that? Because I want us to understand that being saved comes with some benefits. I heard, of, I heard of a brother that had a problem with smoking, real bad problem with smoking. And when he got saved, he still had a problem. And he went to church and the pastor prayed for him, brought the spirit of nicotine. And he says that for, for, for years he's been trying. In fact, he's a very good friend of mine. Um, Carl Maxwell is, is the uncle. He's not a pastor. But when he got saved, he came to church. When the day when he got saved, he had come to church. And our pastor called him out and brought a spit of nicotine over him. He said for the first time in decades, he did not want to smoke. And he said he could not believe it. He gave up smoking immediately. Why? Because a release had been made through the blood of Jesus Christ for I believe I say benefit. And he's not the only person I've heard of. I'm not saying that's going to be easy for everyone. But they have been given victory over sin. Amen. Any more comments, questions? Please feel free to ask questions. The only way, there's no such thing as a, as a, as a stupid question, a bad question. We all need to learn. You may be asking me something that I need to learn as well. You don't feel any way about asking a question. I will just start. Any more questions? Um, the next topic will start next week, Saturday. But we're going to have a class on, on, on Tuesday. The repeat of what we did tonight. So you don't need to come if you don't want to. If you miss a class, anybody miss a class, you can ask them to come to that session on Tuesday. Or if you want anything to be reinforced, you can ask again. You can come and join the class on Tuesday. It's not, it's not, a, it's not compulsory. It's there for you, for your support. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you just to unmute your mics and say good evening or send a greeting or whatever. That's right. Whoever who you are. Everybody can Amen. unmute your mic and send a greeting. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. 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 Good evening again. Good evening.
Good evening, my my virgin from Canada. Good evening. Good. My friend from, from, from England. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, my friend David. Good evening. Greetings, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, we're gonna be closing with a with a, a song. A minister, Smalling, could you just close us in prayer and I just put on the song? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God and Lord, we thank you for this time of coming together. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for what you have started. Father, we humble ourselves before you, O oh God. And we say, we are your servant. We are available to you, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge will rest upon every person here, Lord. I pray, O oh God, that as they go home, that they begin to go over and over that which I've been taught, and I thank you that you'll begin to reveal yourself to them through these words in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we cover every person under the blood. Lord, we cover their going and their coming. Lord, we cover them with the Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Please remember, you're, you're not only studying and learning for yourself, you're learning for others who will benefit from it as well. Amen. Amen. I mean, I'm going to play a song as we close. Again, feel free to us. We, 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 are, we are through this week or today, but we just close the song.
Amen, 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 amen. Just want to encourage you. Encourage you. God is God loves you very much. He wants to be a part of what he's doing. God bless you. See you on Tuesday or on Saturday. Bye. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you. Now. Amen. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Okay. Amen. God bless you.